the pace at which new AI announcements have been coming out has been absolutely insane lately. In this video, I'm gonna try to quickly give you the TLDR of the week and try to break down all of the crazy announcements that have come out of the AI space. Now, most of these I've made individual videos about, so I'm not gonna try to go too deep into every single one. I just wanna give you a quick rundown. Now, the week really kicked off on Tuesday when Google announced that they've opened up the waitlist to Bard. And when people started getting on the waitlist, they actually got access pretty quick. I got barred within 48 hours of getting on the wait list. And to be honest, Bard was pretty underwhelming. After what we've seen from tools like ChatGPT and even Bing Chat, it didn't really come close yet. It still has quite a long way to go. In fact, when I asked it what the benefits of Bard over Bing were, it actually told me that Bing has a better user experience and would probably give you better information. Also on Tuesday, Jensen Huang, the CEO of Nvidia, did a keynote presentation where he broke down all of the really cool things that NVIDIA is doing in AI, including the new NVIDIA Foundations, which is going to allow individual companies to make their own proprietary large language models using NVIDIA's cloud computers and cloud GPUs. This is significant because now any company who wants to can go and create their own AI chatbot like ChatGPT trained on their own business's information and they don't need a supercomputer to run it, they can run it on NVIDIA's computers. People can create their own version of a stable diffusion and run it on NVIDIA's computers. And companies can even develop their own biomedical large language models using NVIDIA's compute power. Also on Tuesday, Adobe announced Firefly Beta. This is Adobe's AI image generation model that's purely trained on images from Adobe stock and Creative Commons images, meaning that every single image that's in the training data set is fully licensed and we shouldn't be too concerned about ethical issues in the future. However, there are still some ethical issues here because not everybody who put photos inside of the Adobe Photo Stock Library agreed for their images to be used as part of this large language model, at least not knowingly. Also, many of the images in Adobe's stock photo library were actually generated with AI using tools like Midjourney and Stable Diffusion, and those tools did use images that were trained from outside of Adobe stock. So where is that line? That's another gray area where I'm sure there'll be a lot of talk and a lot of debate coming up in the near future. Now, the main difference about Adobe Firefly isn't that it really generates images a whole lot better than you'd get out of a Midjourney or a Stable Diffusion. In fact, I would still argue that Midjourney version five is quite a bit better. However, Adobe Firefly brings one of the best user interfaces to image generation, making it much easier and much more intuitive for pretty much anybody to generate images once they're inside Adobe Firefly. Also coming out on Tuesday, Microsoft rolled out image generation inside of Bing Chat. And these images are generated with a more advanced version of DALI. Now, anybody who's messed around with generative art knows that there's really DALI, Stable Diffusion, and Midjourney. Those are the three big players in the generative art space right now. And out of those three, DALI is probably the one that generates the least impressive images. But this new version of DALI that's built into Bing is actually quite impressive, leaving a lot of people to wonder is this the next gen version of DALI that we're seeing in Bing? And as of right now, this is accessible to anybody inside of Bing Chat. You can go use Bing Chat and type, draw me an image of an astronaut riding a horse on the moon. And directly inside of Bing Chat, it will generate the images for you. All right, finally, we're moving on to Wednesday of this week. And on Wednesday, Opera announced that they were adding AI features into the browser. The Opera browser now has ChatGPT and Write Sonic directly built into the browser. So you can select any text inside of the browser and have it summarize it for you, write it in a more creative way for you, even rewrite it in the voice of Yoda for you. Complex and time consuming, implementing AI for business process automation can be. Also in the news on Wednesday, Microsoft announces Microsoft Loop. Microsoft Loop appears to be Microsoft's AI powered version of what we get out of Notion right now. Taking a quick peek at their preview here, everything has a very familiar feel to Notion, but it's going to have a lot of the AI features built into it, and it will connect directly with all of your other Microsoft tools like Excel and Word and PowerPoint, etc. Also on Wednesday, Canva did a huge 
live show to 1.5 million viewers. And in Canva's live presentation, they unveiled their 10 new gifts to Canva. And for the most part, these gifts were a ton of AI features being directly built into Canva. For example, a magic designs feature where you drag an image in and it creates a whole design around that image. Translation features built directly into Canva. Magic eraser where you can select any area of a Canva image and have it erase that image. Beat sync where you can actually take music and have it sync up to your video perfectly. Magic slide presentations where you enter a topic and it literally creates a whole slide deck for you based on that topic. They added their magic write feature to every tool inside of Canva. So you can literally have it write stuff for you using AI into your Canva images and presentations. They updated their text to image feature where just like something like Midjourney, you can type what you want and it will generate an image for you directly inside of Canva that you can use on any of the projects that you're building inside of Canva. So basically Canva added all of the AIs to their product. Also on Wednesday, GitHub announced Copilot X. This is a GPT-4 enabled code helper where coders can ask for help with their code using GPT-4 and it will help them solve their problems with their code and fix their code. It even has a voice interface so you should be able to speak directly to it and have it help you solve your code problems. We're still on Wednesday and Ubisoft announced a new AI tool to automatically generate dialogue for non-playable game characters. So now game developers will be able to use AI to directly create dialogue for their games. This tool promises to make the game development process even faster because now it should cut way back on the time that script writers need to write the scripts and the dialogues for the games. Thursday, during the Game Developers Conference, the people at Unreal Engine put on a presentation that blew some minds. Not only was the realism of the scenery and the vehicles in this game absolutely mind-blowing, but they showed off the new version of MetaHuman. And with MetaHuman, this girl was able to record video directly into an iPhone and be very expressive with her face and her eyes and the motion, and it's all being shot on just a basic iPhone. I know it's on a crazy looking tripod and stuff, but that is just a smartphone there. And then they take that iPhone image and behind the scenes, it processes everything that came through from those iPhone videos, reworks the video into something that the computer can better understand, and then be recreated with absolutely incredible realism. This is all from that iPhone footage. It was turned into this. And not only that, but they were able to take that same data and apply it to other faces and use the exact same facial expressions. All this was shot using an iPhone. And then in my opinion, probably the most groundbreaking news of the week also came on Thursday. We got the announcement that ChatGPT was now going to allow plugins, meaning that we can extend the functionality of what ChatGPT can do by combining it with other existing tools, allowing it to search the internet, being able to upload videos and images and spreadsheets directly into it, and then using the ChatGPT interface to interact with those various files and manipulate them directly from within ChatGPT. They also opened it up for third parties to develop plugins on top of, and we're gonna get third-party plugins from companies like Zapier and Kayak and Instacart and Wolfram and all sorts of companies that are going to build on and add additional functionality into ChatGPT. Now this is still in waitlist and we don't actually have access to this ourselves for the most part, but once this rolls out completely to all the ChatGPT users, this is gonna be absolutely game-changing. And that is my quick rundown of everything that happened this week. This week I thought was gonna be a little slower, but I think there was more announcements this week than there was last week, so I had to do a recap of everything that happened. Now, I tried to cover everything really, really quickly because I wanted to give you the TLDR of the week of here's all of the crazy announcements. So those of you that are out there that don't wanna go down every single rabbit hole, but they want to just kind of get that high level view of all of the advancements that are happening in AI, that's what a video like this is for. If you do wanna dive deeper, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I do have quite a bit of videos that dive deeper into these individual topics and announcements and actually show me playing around with some of these various tools. And if you haven't already, head over to futuretools.io and join the free newsletter. Every Friday, I'll send you an email with 
the five coolest AI tools that I came across for the week, a handful of news articles, a handful of really cool YouTube videos, and one interesting way to make money with AI. It's my TLDR of the week in email form, and I only email you once a week. And to get on that list, you just go to futuretools.io and click on the button that says join the free newsletter, and you'll be on the list to get the next email. Hopefully you find these rapid breakdowns of all of the cool stuff that happened in AI helpful. If you want to see more of these, make sure to let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you watching this channel and clicking the likes and clicking the subscribes. This channel has had insane growth and I really, really appreciate it. So you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.